and Literature Institute. This is Professor Abha Sharma and these video series are dedicated to the discussion of literary theory. Today's topic of discussion is feminism. Imaginatively, she is of the highest importance. Practically, she is completely insignificant. She pervades poetry cover to cover. She is all but absent from history. She dominates the lives of the kings and the conquerors in fiction. In fact, she is just the slave of the boy whose parents have forced a ring upon her finger. Some of the very inspired words and profound thoughts have fallen from her lips in literature. But in real life, she could hardly spell or read and is the property of the husband. These words were spoken or written by Virginia Woolf in her very famous text, A Room of One's Own. So you could well imagine what topic we are going to discuss today. It's feminism, feminism in literature. Feminism doesn't mean that you are male hater. Mm -hmm. There were no significant women writers in the past, not even in Elizabethan era. You have all the male dramatists there, all the male poets who have been describing women magnificently. Shakespeare, all the heroines of Shakespeare are so intelligent. He has portrayed women as if they had the equal share in the society. But this was wrong. Look at Portia. She's so intelligent in Merchant of Venice. Look at Cordelia. She could decide. She could take judgment of her own. Look at Miranda. Look at the heroine of Much Ado About Nothing. She's so witty. Look at Catherine in The Taming of the Shrew. So all the heroines of Shakespeare were, were uh, balanced and uh, morally uh, so strong. They were all literate. But, but the reality was very, very different. They did not know how to read. They were not allowed to write. They were not exposed to writing work at all. So, women's writing can be dated back uh, from the time of Mary Wollstonecraft. She wrote The Vindication of Women's Right. And she was the mother of Mary Shelley and she died on the same day when Mary was Virginia. born. According to Virginia Woolf, Ebra Wen is the first significant female writer in the neoclassical era. So all women should pay their tribute to her because she was the one who started actual women writing. She did not write on the issues of feminism, but she was just a writer, a common writer. Similarly, you have Jane Austen in the Romantic era, but Jane Austen did not write any, uh, anything on the female issues. She wrote as the men did. And there were many female writers who had to change their real names. They had to work through their pseudonyms like Marianne Evans. She was better known as uh, George Eliot. She also wrote like men because nobody was ready to read fictions written by women. It, it was in the subconscious of the people that women cannot write good fictions. Therefore, they changed their names. Even the Bronte sisters in the big name wrote through their pseudonyms. There are very few male writers who were like J.S. Mill. He wrote Subjection of Women's Right. I would quote one more. Uh, the Norwegian writer Henrik Ibsen, His Doll's House. Very significant. He says a woman doesn't have her own home. She's like a doll in a father's house then she, she is shifted to her husband's house as a doll and in a later life she is like a doll in her son's house. 
No property is granted on the name. There are three versions of feminism. One is female, the other is feminine, and the third one is feministic. Female is just the gender opposite to male. Feminine means the emotions, your role in the society, your behavior, that is feminine. And feministic means the politically controlled role of a woman in the society. That very few women worked in 19th century. They did not feel the need of working, neither their family allowed them to work. As soon as they were born, they were just given the basic education and the whole concentration was on their marriage, on their homemaking and all the feminine work. Virginia Woolf in her essay, A Room of One's Own, states that even if women worked as a lecturer in the university, she did not get the same facility. She brings up a fictional name for the University of Women, that was uh, Oxbridge, Oxford and Cambridge. She says that the University of Women had a very poor library. She had to write a paper on women and fiction. She could not find uh, suitable material for her paper in her own library. So she wanted to go in the University of Men, but then she was not allowed there. Either she uh, was required to bring a recommendation letter of the male member of the university or accompanied by the male member himself. And she also said that why uh, women had water and male wine while discussing or during lunch times or uh, they get togethers. She also says that women only wrote fiction because she had not enough time to write the plays or long poetry. She had to take care of the complete household. She had no room of her own self, neither the physical room nor the mental room. So if you give women the mental room, that is, give her the freedom to write or to do anything of her choice, and give her a space, give her a physical room where she finds her solitude for her creative work, then see, she can surpass the beautiful writings of men also. Another writer, Elizabeth Barrett Romney, talks in her Aurora Lay. The protagonist, Aurora Lay, has just turned 20 today. And she is dreaming of a life, of a beautiful life ahead. She wants to be a poet. She is very sensitive and emotional. But then she is engaged to some Romney Lay who doesn't approve of her writing. It's better to be a social worker rather than a poet. So he wants her to be his helping maid, not just a wife but a sister of charity to be gone from. Society has already dictated roles to women. She is not born as a woman, but she is made a woman. She should be a good housemaker. She should be a good cook. She should be a good wife. She should be a good daughter or mother, but she is not allowed to be herself. The Anglo-American critic and writer Ellen Schalter speaks of feminism in her work towards a feminist poetics. She says that initially women was just a reader. She read all the books written by men so we can call a feminine critique. And the second phase was when she started writing and she gave a French term to it, gynocritic. Endocritic for the males and gynocritic the female, the female writers. Yes. That in the beginning 
she only read and her complete mental makeup was according to the writings of the male writers. She adopted the role given by the male writers and when she started writing the first phase in the first phase she could only write as the men did. She wrote exactly like them and in the next phase she said no this is not me I'm not like this she negated she negated her own thoughts because they were all dictated by men writers she said whatever has been projected till now about her is wrong she does not feel like this and in the third phase she projected her real self what she really feels about her and this is the modern trend of the female writing. It's a very nice essay by Ellen Shorter and she has really made a difference in feministic writing as Simone de Vivelle did in, did in her The Second Sex. I have the book here. Feministic writings have inspired a lot of Indian females to come up and they have really gained popularity in Anglo-Indian writing like Anita Desai, The Cry of the Peacock. Her own daughter Kiran Desai who bragged the Booker Prize uh, for her writing The Inheritance of Loss. Then you have uh, Kamla Markande, The Nectar in the Sea. We have Jhumpa Lehri uh, writing Diasporic from America. She got the Pulitzer Prize for Interpreter of Melodies and then came her the name Saip, which was Diasporic in nature. We have Rama Mehta, uh, Mehta's Inside the Haveli, based on the story in Udaipur. We have Geeta Mehta writing the Karma Kola. Geeta Hariharan. A Thousand Phases of a Night. There she decodes some of the heroines from Mahabharata. Then we have Manju Kapoor, The Difficult Daughters, Chitra Dev Karni, The Mistress of Spices, Dr. Sudha Murthy, Wise and Otherwise, Taslima Nasreen, so many books on feminism also, Shobha Day. Called Starry Nights and many other books discussing female roles. Then Shashi Deshpande, That Long Silence. Indian female writing has progressed so much, and I'm proud to be a female in India. Although I'm not a feminist, I'm an equalist. I believe that men and women should not contradict with each other's. Uh, thoughts and all they should try to live in harmony help each other and should not carry the hate a request to all do not treat your girl just as a Devi or a goddess or a vamp or a slave give her the air to breathe give her the the right to judge herself make her let her make wrong judgments let her be free for her own self do not kill the angel only in the kitchen let's end our topic here i know that it is very difficult to stop discussing feminism today because we all share very different views do not don't forget to press the like button and comment in the comment box. Also explore our website www.miraclewebstore.com Till then, goodbye, take care, thank you so much. <music>